Hey, welcome back to my old lathe. Yep, that's a new tool post. That's an AXA Multifix Size A. I will do a separate video on that, but look at it. It's just it's a thing of beauty. But I'm not here to talk about the Multifix today. Today I want to talk about machining precision diameters on a manual lathe without doing any tricks. Just good practice. And I will just start with demonstration how it's done and then I will talk about some theory behind it. So let's get started, make some chips. To show you the basic concept I have a insert a turning tool with a CNMG insert and the material is 4140HT. Uh, that's a commercial heat treat, quite, quite, a, quite good material, machines nicely, quite tough. So, and now let's just say we want to cut a shoulder at a 16 millimeter diameter from here to here. And we want to hit 16 plus minus, let's say 20 micron. Nothing special, just using the dials of the lathe, not using the digital readout. My, my common practice now would be to, to measure the OD of the stock here or measure one of those diameters here. For example, this one, which is conveniently 20 millimeters. And then I come in with my tool. Touch off lightly and clear the tool off the work. Then we drop over to the dials of the of the cross slide and left hand holds the hand crank in place and right hand adjusts the diameter. So we know this is 20 millimeter in diameter, so we hit we we move the, the dial here to zero. So we have a, a starting point. The dial on this lathe reads in diameter. Each line distance is 0.05 millimeters, that's 50 microns in diameter. That way I can now dial in something like one millimeter to rough down most of the stock. I'm now at uh, roughly 17 millimeters. This this should this is now my my reference. I'm going to mic this and I get 16.47 millimeters. On my dial, I'm 0.5 millimeters away. So I have to take these 30 microns that I measured into account by moving the dial, not moving the hand crank. About uh, two thirds of the spacing. Now I will dial in 0.75. This should give me 16.25 millimeters. I will take another cut, measure it, and then take a final precision cut. And I'm not sure what happened here. So let's take this measurement. So here we go, 16.254, so 40 microns over size. Uh, hitting micron dimensions with dials is a little bit tough, so we're not going to bother with that. And our self-given tolerance is wide enough that it doesn't matter. So now my, my, my measured dimension exactly matches up with what I, what I have set on the dial, so I can dial in the final diameter. <laughs> take a cut and take our measurement. Thank you. 
And yes, for a CM, for this kind of insert, 250 micron in diameter, 0.25 millimeters, is almost a little bit too little of a cut. But it's still <laughs> allowed me to hit my my 16 millimeters quite okay-ish. Uh, yes, a little bit of luck is in, in involved if you want to hit the last digit on a, on a one micron reading micrometer. But that's a pretty decent result. The main idea behind this technique of balanced cuts is to have at least the last two depth of cuts almost the same thickness. That, that was just with the dial. I did not use the DRO on this example. If you want to hit very close tolerances, you can always use a dial indicator on, your, on the axis you're moving. But if you have half-decent dials, like on this Amco lathe, the, the dials are, are quite nice. I would prefer a slight smaller gray, um, Narrower lines, finer red red lines, but still uh, very, very usable. Some theory. Let's say, uh, this is cross-section of course, let's say this blue blue outline here, of the small diameter here, uh, also called final diameter in this case, uh, that's the part you want to machine. And let's say this final diameter needs to be quite precise. Let's say something in the realm of plus minus 15 microns. So let's say this is a plus minus 0.15 millimeters. You do this of course on a, on a lathe, manual lathe, this is in my case. And you want to hit the diameter quite good because preferably right in the center of your tolerance because that's good practice. You don't want to hang uh, on, on either one of the limits of your tolerance if you don't have to absolutely or the process doesn't allow otherwise. In a lot of cases when you talk to hobbyists they will take a lathe tool, they will rough all the material down and then they will take a high-speed steel tool because the common consensus seems to be that you can grind high-speed steel sharper than carbide, which is a myth. They take a high-speed steel tool, they hone it nicely, make it razor sharp and then they sneak up to the final dimensions with tiny tiny cuts. And at some point they overshoot the dimension and the part is scrap. Uh, that's usually what happens if you do that. Uh, even worse if you use inserted tooling. Uh, trying to sneak up with tiny depth of cuts does just not work. Short intermission here. During editing I realized that this sounded way more arrogant than it should have. But truth be told, I messed up precision diameters myself way too often trying to sneak up with tiny depth of cuts to the final diameter. At the moment I started to use the technique I described earlier with balanced cuts and a reasonable depth of cut. My results got absolutely repeatable and I'm not scared of IT7 or IT6 precision fits anymore. Uh, it's just not, not a problem. So didn't mean to offend anyone with with uh, how harsh I said that. It. It's more... I'm, I'm just trying to help. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. The strategy that works is you take any old tool, <laughs> you rough down most of the stock, doesn't matter how you do it, large depth of cut, slow feed, uh, small depth of cut, high feed, just get the material away. That's all the all this, this stock here that has cross hatching on it. Then you take a, then you need to know your tool. You know that the tool you're using, for example, will take 0.5 millimeters in diameter and leave a very good finish, break the chip nicely, and you're not in trouble if you do that. So then you take a 0.5 millimeter cut, you measure your diameter that that you, that you get as a result. Adjust your dial or your DRO on the lathe. Then you take a final cut that's almost the same depth of cut with some correction to get to, into the tolerance. Take your cut measure and your, 
you're spot on. It's guaranteed. If your machine is half decent, tight, every everything's locked down nicely, uh, this will work every time. So let's let's look at this closer. You you will come in with your with your carbide insert, touch off out here, just make a little bit of a scratch into the surface, and zero out your dial or DRO. You know this diameter because you can measure it. And then you take enough roughing passes until you're like, let's say, one millimeter larger. I'm always talking uh, diameter here. One millimeter larger than your final dimension. Then you split that one millimeter into two, gives you 0.5 millimeters in diameter. You take a 0.5 millimeter cut, you measure, you adjust your dial, then you take a final cut and you're spot on. That's the whole, that's the whole concept behind this method. If you're not uh, very, very sure about your setup in the beginning, uh, you, not, nobody will, will, um, will blame you if you add, for example, another one or two balanced cuts. Uh, we call these balanced cuts because they all have almost the same depth of cut and the cutting forces, the deflection and the part, the machine and the tool you're using is, is with each of the cuts almost the same. So balanced. Let's say you start with two millimeters of stock allowance. You take 0.5 millimeter cut, measure, point to not, take another 0.5, measure. Uh, then you see how how your lathe behaves and if three cuts hit the dimension you want the fourth and final cut will will too that's just it has to <laughs> uh, except if you for example chip the the insert or something like that that, that that's a problem then <laughs> Okay, let's walk this through again and you get a complete overview of what I do. I have a piece of, this time it's aluminium, uh, just to mix things up. You need to measure your stock beforehand or uh, you already know which diameter you have, but I prefer to measure it. So, this is 16.5 millimeter for 16.55 millimeter. I'll take my, my tool now, touch off on the material and set my, my dial out here to 0.55 millimeter. Basically, I'm setting it to minus 0.55. So if I add 0.55 millimeter on the on my hand crank, I'm at zero. Let's say I want a precision diameter of 10 millimeters. 16 minus 10 is six millimeters. So we go. We're going to remove like five millimeters in. one pass. So one, two, three, four, five. Now we take a pass. Now we should have roughly one millimeter left. We can idiot check that, but it's not really necessary. So we're at 11.01 millimeter with calipers. Now we have roughly one millimeter left. We dial in half of that, of that uh, allowance that we have left. Let's say 0.5. Now we take a finishing pass, a first finishing pass. Okay, 
Now it takes a little bit more precise measuring instrument like a micrometer. And we check our diameter back here. And I measure 10.531, so 0.53 millimeters oversize. And that's, that's basically what I'm going to dial in now. 0.5 and 30 microns. Take another pass and we should be on 10 with very little deviation. And I'm filming this, this in one take and with the hand crank and the part in the same view so you know I'm not doing anything magical. And there we have it. Ten point zero zero four four micron oversize. I did not take temperature in consideration, especially after the heavy roughing pass. I should have waited a little bit. Uh, the part is still above an ambient temperature, but this is just a demonstration and meh. We're not chasing microns here. But you see that there, there is no real magic to cutting precision fits on a lathe. What you want is you want a dial that is clearly to read. You want a decent cutting tool, should be a sharpened nail. Uh, high speed steel is perfectly fine. S still in, in 2020, high speed steel works. I prefer to use carbide for basically everything. I even prefer carbide inserts if I can because they are fast and convenient. <laughs> you want your tool mounted rigidly. <coughs> Solid tool post mount. <coughs> you want the slide way of your lathe to be in good condition but even with, uh, with a lathe in bad condition if you take balancing cut uh, everything will deform the same way. I did this technique on a, on a small um, 7 by 12 mini lathe, the, the, the standard mini lathe, uh, and it just worked the same. But really, the solid tool post helps a lot to give you confidence in your setup. The, the only trick is to keep your final 2-3 cuts at the same depth, so everything loads and deforms the same under, under cutting pressure. I think this technique is nothing new for, for a lot of my viewers. I did not invent this technique by far. I basically learned this in an apprenticeship. But I see, especially in, in hobbyist forums, uh, where I read frequently, that people try to sneak up on a, on a precise fit with tiny cuts. And usually that ends with, <laughs> with an underside shaft. Or bore. The same technique works, of course, with bore, just uh, outside, moving outwards. I hope you, I hope you learned something. I hope you you took something along along in your journey with with this demonstration. Thank you all for watching, and I'll be back. <laughs>